<sighs> you know what, guys? I would say I hope you all are having a great day full of positivity and happiness, but I don't think there's any of that to go around here because I really just don't know how to start this video, guys. This is a really tough topic for me to tackle because this is a game that personally, from the very minute it was announced, I was excited for because never in a million years did I think this game was going to be getting a sequel just based off of how the first game was received even though I personally really enjoyed it. It never really went anywhere. It never really did incredibly well, but all of a sudden out of left field, we got a sequel announcement. And following the game from that announcement up until release has been very exciting. The gameplay has always looked better and better each time they showed it. It seems like they took the concepts of the first game and just expanded upon them in meaningful ways to overall improve the gameplay experience. And then on top of that, man, once we were getting closer to launch and the review started coming out for this game, they were overall extremely positive. Pretty much every single news outlet really loved the game. Big YouTube reviewers absolutely loved it. It just seemed like everything was going right. And in fact, I was even excited about this game to the point where I was saying that this is easily a 2024 game of the year contender before I even played it just from the gameplay footage I saw in those reviews. And overall, man, this should have been one of the best video games this entire generation but what happened here is truly a tragedy and I think this is an event that the entire video game industry will look back upon moving into the future and realize this is the danger of flying too close to the sun. This is the danger that can come with overwhelming hype and positive reception. If you let the sin of greed overwhelm you and let it rear its ugly head, you can destroy something so great that it should have been an overwhelming success but instead turned out to be a resounding failure. And that, of course, is Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, where do I begin with this, guys? Because overall, dude, I was so excited for this game. I played the original back in the day on the PlayStation 3 when one of my friends recommended it to me. I had never even heard of it before. And he's like, dude, if you like Skyrim, you're gonna love this shit. And I'll tell you what, man, he was absolutely right. I really enjoyed the original Dragon's Dogma on the PlayStation 3. I even went back and played a little bit of the original in preparation for the launch of Dragon's Dogma 2, just to, you know, reminisce in those good memories I had as a child. So going into launch, man, I was very excited, especially after seeing all the positive review scores and getting to watch hours of gameplay prior to launch. And overall, it just, it looked great. And I could not wait to actually get my hands on it. But with the news surrounding Dragon's Dogma 2 that has reared its ugly head post-launch, I just, I don't even know what to think anymore, guys. I mean, all of my hype, all of my interest, all of my excitement is completely gone at this point because of the disgusting, evil, vile practices that Capcom are engaging in when it comes to Dragon's Dogma 2, and that, of course, is selling in-game items for real-world money. Now, forget the fact that Capcom does this in pretty much every single video game that they release, whether it be Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, you name it, man. If it's a single player game, it's probably had microtransactions in it at this point. But the fact that it's in Dragon's Dogma 2 is different this time around. Now, it doesn't really matter either that all of these items can be very easily obtained at the early stages of the game simply by playing it. The mere fact that they exist in the first place is downright unacceptable. I mean, you'd have to be stupid to pay for these items because they are so easily obtained in the beginning of the game that it really would serve no purpose other than a stupid tax, but the fact that Capcom even had the nerve to think they could get away with this in 2024, putting microtransactions in a single player game is all I need to know that no one should support a game like this. Because when it comes down to it, man, we as gamers need to band together and stand up against the real problem in the video game industry. And spoiler alert for you guys, it's not the over-politicization of video games. It's not dog shit storytelling. It's not terrible game design. It's not buggy, broken, or incomplete games at launch. It's not forced live service models. And it's not people like Neil Cuckman who say video games aren't supposed to be fun. The real enemy we should all be standing up against is optional microtransactions in a single player game that could 
easily be earned if you just played the game instead of buying them. That is what we need as gamers to stand up against because that is the true enemy in the video game industry and we cannot, we will not allow for Capcom to think that this is acceptable in any way, shape, or form because just the mere existence of these optional purchases that could be easily acquired in the game by simply playing it for a few hours is unacceptable by any and all accounts. I don't care what anyone says at this point. You know, people like Yong Ya have tried to deflect criticism and act like they didn't know when they were reviewing the game in a now deleted post. Yong flat out lies and tells his audience that he had no idea that these microtransactions were in the game. He says, yes, folks, I did hear about the awful microtransactions for Dragon's Dogma 2. Reviewers were blindsided. The microtransactions were not there during the review period, and we were never told about their existence. I am away in Boston right now for PAX, but hope to make a video when I'm able to. Seriously disappointed in Capcom for this. What a shitty way to tarnish Dragon's Dogma 2's launch. Now, in this now deleted post, Yong Ya attempted to deflect any and all blame for people being surprised by these microtransactions onto Capcom themselves, but we found out that this conspiracy runs even deeper because a YouTuber with an actual ounce of credibility and actual integrity came out and said, yes, they were extremely upfront about the fact that there would be paid DLC. I looked at it, saw it's a bunch of shit I'm going to earn in game anyway, and never gave it a second thought. Anyone saying it was sneaky is lying for clicks. And in this, he shows a screenshot of the material that reviewers received who got a review code for Dragon's Dogma 2 from Capcom that says, before playing, please read the web guide and FAQ linked here, as well as the media review guidelines here and paid DLC guide available for download. So not only is Capcom trying to pull the wool over our eyes, but reviewers like IGN, GameSpot, and of course, you know, supposed consumer advocate YouTubers like Yong Ya were in on this entire grift this entire time. They knew and were willfully ignorant to the fact that this game had the most unacceptable practice in the entire video game industry, and that, of course, is optional microtransactions in a single-player game that could be very easily earned just by playing the game for a few hours. I mean, I just truly can't believe it that someone with as much integrity and who cares about the video game industry as much as Yong Ya would lie to the community and not do his due diligence at the very least when it comes to such a severe and important topic because he's in on this guys he is just as responsible for Capcom in all of this and I just I don't even know what to say anymore guys because my heart is broken my day is ruined and the excitement I had for this game which was easily one of my most anticipated games for the entire year has been absolutely crushed I, I just don't even know where to turn anymore guys Guys, because the Western AAA video game industry has failed me. I thought the Japanese AAA video game industry was like that last shining ray of hope breaking through the storm clouds, but even that has been completely covered up at this point because we have seen that Capcom and other Japanese developers by extension have been willing to stoop to this brand new low that I never thought was ever possible. I mean, forget the fact that this was in pretty much every single one of their other games they've released in recent memory and no one seem to give a fuck, but this time it's completely different, man, because it's Dragon's Dogma 2, and we as a gaming community need to rise up and not stand for this type of anti-consumer bullshit. So I'm calling on everyone who's watching this video right now, please, for the love of God, if you have any sort of passion or love or even interest in the video game industry, please put your feet down and rise up with your fellow gamers and stand up against this true injustice in the video game industry. Dragon's Dogma 2 is only the tip of the iceberg or the entrance to the rabbit hole and who knows how deep this thing goes, man. Because the entire video game industry has been absolutely corrupted by corporate greed. Because in the past when it came to video games, video game developers didn't have any sort of interest whatsoever in making money. The only thing they wanted to do was sell their game just to make enough money so that they could afford to fund the next sequel or project they were working on. It was just about breaking even even, but nowadays, it's about making as much money as humanly possible. Video games are no longer art, they're simply a business, and unfortunately, that is something I will not and cannot stand for, so that's why 
I'm asking all gamers out there to join together and rise up against this absolute injustice. Do not support Dragon's Dogma 2 and do not support any other game like it. This is where the fun begins. Now that that's out of the way, guys, let's go ahead and get into some uh, genuine thoughts about this game after playing it for about eight hours straight on stream last night. And overall, I have to say, for the most part, this game is really fun, man. It obviously has its issues, which I guess we could go ahead and highlight now. I mean, the biggest one is the performance. The game runs like shit on pretty much any platform you play it on. I'm playing it on PS5 because I heard the PC port was absolutely horrible. And if I planned on streaming it, I would have to have OBS running at the same time. And if you've ever streamed anything with OBS, OBS and a CPU intensive game, you know, that is a match made in hell. So I decided to get it on console. I would say for the most part, the performance is somewhat stable, but it definitely has some major dips here and there when the game's action does get ramped up. So I would say if you're someone that does not want to deal with any sort of performance issues whatsoever, or, you know, you can handle minor performance issues, you may still want to hold off on buying this game until it does get stabilized a little bit and the PC port and console ports do get tweaked so that they run a little bit better than their current state because it is pretty rough on the performance side of things and I can 100% understand people who do not want to buy this game given the fact that the game absolutely runs like shit in its current state. Now the second issue that I've seen going around that I think is a genuine legit criticism is the fact you can't delete your save file on this game. Once you have your save file that's it. You can't delete it. You can't restart the game with a fresh character character and pawn setup, you have to utilize the new game plus mechanic, which is a really dumb design decision considering this game only lets you have one save file to begin with. So it's not even like you could just have multiple characters across different save files. You can't even do that, man. Like you are forced to have one save file and one character. I've even heard that because the way the DRM set up on this game is if you go into like your Steam files and delete the actual save, it can lock you out of the game entirely because it thinks you're like using a pirated copy of the game. So as things sit right now, there is no actual way to delete your character and start the game completely fresh, which is such a fucking strange design decision. But you know, for whatever reason, that's a thing. So I think those are two very valid issues that I see going around the internet surrounding Dragon's Dogma 2. I think the pay to win narrative is fucking stupid. All of those items basically have zero effect on your actual ability to play the game. You you can very easily get pretty much everything listed in the uh, microtransactions or, you know, in-game store, whatever you want to call it. That is not even an issue in my mind. I mean, fuck, dude. For the purposes of this video, I literally went and bought every single one of them, and I can confirm after playing for eight hours, I have not used a single one of them. So if that tells you anything, this really has zero fucking impact on the actual experience of the game itself. So I would not place too much weight in this pay-to-win narrative whatsoever. Every single Capcom game for the past, like, what, five, six years has had this exact same thing. Devil May Cry 5 had it. Resident Evil, you know, all the remakes had it. Uh, Monster Hunter has had it forever. I mean, pretty much anything they put out has this exact same kind of like, you know, pay to win bullshit. But for some reason, when it comes to Dragon's Dogma 2, you know, shit hit the fan and people all of a sudden got really ass blasted over it. I don't really get it personally. All of this stuff, I cannot stress enough, is extremely fucking easy to earn in game. You will never run short of any of this stuff if you actually try to find it. It is not hard to do. And no, you cannot pay to make a new save file in this game. The only thing you can pay to do in regards to your character is change the appearance, which requires 500 rift crystals, which you can purchase within the first, I think like maybe one or two hours of the game with minimal quests and work done behind the scenes. So it's very easy to obtain. Do not waste your money buying any of this shit because it's extremely easy to earn it in the game if you simply play it. Like I mentioned, earlier it basically is a retard tax like it's just set up in a way to like bait people into thinking oh if i buy these items the game's going to be significantly easier it's not most of these items will become so useless by the time you put maybe 10 hours in it's not even going to matter at that point so i think that's a complete and total controversy, and i don't really think it should have any impact whatsoever when it comes to your purchasing decision of the game i think the performance issues and the save file dilemma is definitely something to take into account especially the 
performance issues. Now, me personally, I played the game for eight hours. Performance issues aside, I had a really good time with it. I think the overall gameplay experience here is fucking solid. It is a little bit slower than the original Dragon's Dogma, which I'm not really too big of a fan of. It feels a lot more tactical and clunky, but, you know, I guess that's fine. You know, people obviously, I think, prefer that style of combat now more a days than the more arcadey feel of Dragon's Dogma 1. Personally, I do prefer the combat feel of Dragon's Dogma 1. It could just be because I'm playing as a mage, which feels a lot less powerful this time around, to put it lightly. But overall, I've had a really good time playing it. I will say my other gripe is the same thing I had with the first game. There is a lot of walking to one location and then backtracking. You will spend a lot of time walking down the exact same path over and over and over again. It does get a little bit fucking obnoxious after a while. I know people are like, but dude, you get to explore this amazing open world filled with enemies. The enemy types are not that varied. It will feel very repetitive. You will know exactly where the enemies are going to come from. And yes, they respawn in the exact same numbers, quantities, types, and locations. So that is a big complaint I do have with this game. I do not enjoy backtracking in open worlds. I enjoy when they have a fast travel mechanic because it just speeds up the monotony a little bit, but you are definitely going to be putting in your steps, so to say, when playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and going through the open world, going from point A to point B. Now, the ox cart mechanic does mitigate this a little bit, and it is a nice addition, but if you didn't like it about Dragon's Dogma 1, you're definitely not going to like it about Dragon's Dogma 2, but, you know, I don't really want this to turn into a review. I think long story short here, I'm really enjoying the game. I think if you can look past the performance issues, I would say go ahead and pick it up, but I just mainly wanted to make a shit posty video because the idea came to me while I was waiting for the game to install that it'd be really fucking funny to buy all the microtransactions, record the footage, and record a kind of like sarcastic rant about how much I fucking hate the microtransactions at the same time. So I don't know, dude, this was just a random fucking shit post video and hopefully people will get genuinely mad at it, man. You know, that's really all I can hope for at the end of the day. Like just judging based off the amount of people that get pissed off when I say that I like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I'm kind of on a streak here where I'm just really enjoying a lot of the negative attention. So, you know, if you did enjoy this video and actually made it this far, which would be an absolute miracle if you ask me, because I have a feeling most people are going to watch five minutes of this shit and completely tune the fuck out. Maybe I'll put timestamps just to maybe give me a fighting chance here. But overall, man, I think the uh, reception of this video is going to be overwhelmingly negative. So if you could help your boy out, drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how many people unironically think I'm being serious at the beginning, how many people are trying to call me out. Like, I think it's going to be a good time in the comment section. So, you know, feel free to chime in. Feel free to uh, let me know your thoughts on Dragon's Dogma 2 in the comment section if you have played it yourself. Interested to hear y'all's take. But, uh, you know, with that shit said, guys, I appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. You guys are the fucking best. And I will catch you guys next time. Oh, yeah. And recruit my pawn as well, guys. She's got massive fucking titties.